Hey y'all, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I made this knife out of some wrought iron that was found at the bottom of Lake Erie and some 10,000 year old log oak. Thanks for watching. So prior to filming this, I had already forged the chain link, which is about a 30 pound chain link, into a bar that I could use to make the steel for this knife. This video was not sponsored by KEH, but I did use some sweet vintage lenses that I got from KEH.com, uh, and I, I recommend if you're into photography or videography that you check them out, if you haven't already. Uh, here I am using the Ameribraid surface grinder attachment to make my surfaces flat, so when I make my bar of steel, everything's nice and even. The core of the steel was 1084 high carbon steel. I find that steel has a tendency to uh, help with getting a nice dark etch, which is something that I wanted to go for in this place. Once all the layers of steel are welded together, I heat them up in the forge till they are screaming hot, like super hot, especially with wrought iron, it has to be really hot. And then I forge weld them together on the press and draw the bar out into a usable size that I can forge the knife from. About a quarter inch thick. I cut off about five inches, I want to say, if I remember right, to use for this knife, which ended up being around a seven inch knife, about two and a quarter inches tall. Whenever you make Damascus or layered steel, grind your edges so you know you have good clean edges before you start forging something from it. When I watch Forge and Fire, I'm always frustrated by that. <laughs> I always forge my tang first, and I'm using a great guillotine tool from uh, Cliff Dufton and John Ariani from Sunset Forge. They made those, and it's a great tool. After I forge that, I forge the tip, and then draw the heel down. And then it's just kind of forging it to shape. Forging and beveling all that fun stuff. Forge, you already know what I'm talking about. And this is the touch mark. I got my touch mark from Buckeye Engraving, which is a local company here in Ohio. After I forge, I always do a little bit of, uh, it's like a quick anneal. Uh, and then I rough grind the profile, drill a hole in the tank so I can hang it in my Gen Ken vertical air bath. And then it's time to do some thermal cycling, which I didn't video, and then the quench, which is, for those of you that don't know, that's what makes the blade hard. After I quench it, I temper it, and this steel I temper at 350 for two cycles at two hours per cycle. So the next day after things were tempered, it was time to uh, make sure everything was straight, brush all the uh, forge scale off, and then start grinding my bevels. Whenever I'm grinding, I switch up my angles so that I can really make sure that I've gotten rid of my last grit. Chop saw helps make the angled handle fit up a lot easier. One of these days I'll get a mill, but for now I guess my old drill press will do the job. And it's a matter of fitting up the little pieces for the handle various brooches and files. Once they're all fit up, I glue it together. It's really ugly. I will say I sand and etch my blade after the handle is done. That way I don't have to mess with dealing with scratches after the back or from slinging around. Handle square, I start shaping it onto where I am. It's gotta be square first. That helps. And 
as I go, I'm always checking to make sure things are as symmetrical as I can make them. You know, I'm doing this all by eye and all by hand. It's more to me what feels good. I use a two inch wheel when I do my finger uh, pinch grip. Always hand sand your handles, it looks better. It's a great tool from Trojan Horse Forge. For all of my hand sanding, I use that tool, it's super helpful. So I tried a coffee edge and I didn't end up liking it, so I ended up re-hand sanding everything and doing it all on ferric chloride. And then I got this great tip from Nicolade's Knives. I hope I said that right. If I messed that up, please forgive me. Um, he's a great, great knife maker in Detroit, uh, and it's using a sun bright polishing cloth kind of to help clean up your edge a little bit after the fact. Finally, I finished sharpening on a series of whetstones like I always do. If you guys like the video, please leave a comment, let me know. Uh, I plan on doing some educational videos here, some knife care and sharpening techniques. But let me know what you want to see, and uh, I'll try and make those videos too. Thank you for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe, and hopefully I'll see you again in the next one.